Welcome to the Leadership is Female podcast, Susan Doring. She is the author of Smart Career Moves for Smart Women. We are so excited to have you here today. Thank you for joining us. No, thank you, Emily, for inviting me. It's a great privilege and pleasure to spend the time talking to you and, uh, you know, for, for your listeners. So tell us, first of all, where are you in the world, um, who you are and what you do? I'm in London, UK. Uh, I'm actually in South London on the banks of the River Thames. I, when I look out of my window, I see the river going past, which is really rather lovely. Uh, I'm a career and leadership coach, and I have been doing that for about 15 years now. Um, and I work with clients pretty well all over the world. And I'm also a what is called a trainer, or I facilitate training, uh, large, usually uh, on the subject of career development, uh, sometimes team building and something like that, sort of management skills as well, leadership skills. But the focus is definitely um, career development. So I combine those two over the years the coaching uh, has sort of taken over a bit more and is definitely a priority. And within the coaching, I have also developed a focus coaching women. Um, and that's that's the, the basis for the book that I've just written. Yeah. And if you guys didn't notice, this is why Susan is here today. What better person to bring on the podcast than a woman who wrote a book called Smart Career Moves for Smart Women. And you did mention that you are coaching individuals to achieve professional success and facilitating their career development. Tell us a little bit about how you got into this line of work. Well, in fact, I started off, um, I have a, I have gone through several career transitions myself um, and after a break out of personal uh, reasons um, I started looking around for something more solid more structured and through my network uh, got the opportunity to work in training, facilitating, and this was all about diversity, uh, getting um, a very male-based organization to understand what diversity is and how women can make their uh, mark in that organization. And then I was passed on, so I did a lot of training, a lot of facilitating of training for that international organization. And then what happened was that uh, participants in the training would come up to me and say, do you do this in sort of on a one-to-one -one basis? And I would say, well, no. But then I thought, well, perhaps I could. So I got myself a coaching diploma, which took 14 months. It was a serious coaching um, uh, course. And that's how I moved into coaching and uh, have been doing that, as I said, for 14, 15 years now. Well, we are looking forward to going to class with you today <laughs> on this podcast. And it's because our listeners are career driven women. So can you tell them how to strategically prepare for a, a career transition, be it a promotion or applying for a new job in the industry? Yes, uh, in a nutshell. Um, I think it's really important to take time to reflect. And I think this is one of the things that we often don't do because, you know, we're on a treadmill, we're in some sort of position and we're just getting on with it and we're getting on with life. But I think it's really important to stop and reflect on who you want to be. Go back to what really interests you. What gives you joy? Ask yourself that question. What would give me joy? So that's the, that's the foundation. That's the really first step. And then what's really important is to do your research. Identify what options you have 
And I think this can also be quite revelationary um, that, you know, you suddenly think, oh, well, I could do that. Or and when you start talking to people, and that's also important. Um, oh, well, there's an idea. Let me let me think about that. Right. Recognize that you've got options. And then the next really important thing is to get support and sponsors. And um, I'm sure your your listeners know a lot about sponsors. But we have, you know, we have professional sponsors, but we also have personal sponsors and we need those. We need people who will build bridges for us. We cannot do it alone. It's one of the biggest messages, I suppose, that I can tell your listeners that you you really do need to reach out and get support. You need to plan. You need to plan strategically and you need to be prepared to learn. And I think that's also a really important sort of you know message that whenever you're going to whenever you're at a crossroads you are going to have to learn something new you're going to have to learn a complementary skill and you know women are good at this <laughs> we're flexible um so be prepared to learn go out do it and the other thing uh sort of to wrap this up really is to believe in yourself find your confidence find your self-confidence um know that you can do it remember those times that that you did succeed that you achieved something uh, and you can do this too yeah and sometimes it's time for a a, a change altogether. Um, yeah. So what are some of the practical tips that you can provide about demystifying the unwritten rules of making a successful career change? Well, um, do your research. Research is really, really important. Uh, you, you've got to know what people need. And that's when you can curate your own career, curate your own job almost, and say, I can do that. I can learn that bit that I haven't got already. And do, your, do the research to know what people need so that you can present yourself in a way that makes them sit up and say, oh, that's interesting. Yes, she sounds like a really, really good option. Um, a good person to to employ right network i spoke only yesterday to a young woman who said who who who, who i we'd had some coaching she'd had some coaching with me and um we met for a drink and she said i'm so grateful Do you know i've got this new job and she's working as a project manager for a very highly renowned university she works in arts she has a degree in fine art and in art management, and she's now working on a splendid, really super international project for a top level university. And she said, actually, I got it through my network, which is what you said, that was me, uh, how, how you get things, right? You don't, not, not immediately, but people pass you on, people notice, who you are and what you're interested in and what you're capable of and so that's that's really the message um and the other thing is get support you know as i've already said i'm don't want to repeat myself but um you can't do it alone and yeah. these are big messages in 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 my book smart career moves for smart women yeah well and i love what you're saying here again about doing your research and I, we were talking before we hit record here today that a lot of women are working for one organization for a long time. And if you're working with that same group of people um, in that same industry, you're, you might not be aware of what else is available because you're on that one track mind. And you also might not be aware of what income earning or what salary potential is available outside of either your company or your career track. Have you found that happen with lots of women you work with? Absolutely, absolutely. You get stuck in a rut. Uh, and it's very easy because there isn't, it's it's sort of safe. I think that's the, the, the thing, you know, and you know, you know, the routine and you know what's expected of you. But then you suddenly realize I'm not developing, I'm not growing, I'm actually 
you know, this is boring. I'm stuck. Uh, you know, people, women reach a career plateau. Um, so you, as you say, you've got to find out what is going on in your industry, but elsewhere. And you can do this nowadays, you know, through social media, through meeting friends, through your network. Uh, a lot of this is, is really uh, out there. It's open. It's open source. You can find it. You can find out the information, but you have to do it. You know, you've got to sit down and do your research. Yeah, well, and I love that now some laws are passing in the United States where if you're uh, posting a job, you have to post the salary. And it's only in certain states so far, but I would encourage uh -huh. our listeners to find out what states those are, look for jobs in those states. So not necessarily to take a job in that state, but to get an idea of the salary range of positions and what they're paying in other areas. I think that is so empowering when you're going out there and either asking for a raise or looking for a new position with another company. Absolutely. And it's very good to hear that that is becoming law in, in, in the United States. Um, it's uh, not law in the UK. And I think as a sort of tradition, one is always a little bit hesitant at asking about uh, salaries, which you know, why? Uh, it doesn't really make sense. Um, so try and find out, definitely. Yeah, and one of your special skills is empowering women to identify what they want professionally, prepare for the change like we've spoke about already, but cultivate those necessary skills and self-confidence as the key to a successful career change. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? Can you give us a practical example? Hmm. Yes. Uh, I think it has to go back to finding your true self. Um, that's how we have to start. We have to know who we really want to be. Um, I remember a, a coaching client I had who had an MBA from Harvard um, and she had a bachelor's degree um, uh, and she was working, basically, she wanted to work in um, corporate social responsibility. And she was at a crossroads because she'd taken some time out and she um, was married with two small children. And of course, she loved her family. You know, I mean, there is no question about this, but she also loved her career. And she wanted to continue her career. So when you talk about empowering women to identify what they want professionally, it's really uh, about, first of all, knowing who you are, knowing what you want, being true to who you are, and secondly, communicating this. And I think this may be one of the challenges that we often find, particularly perhaps in relationships, you know, um, a lot is taken for granted, but we need to stop and, and say, look, this is really what I want. Let us find a solution, a way to make this happen together. And when I think of that particular coaching client, it certainly wasn't easy. Um, and her husband had a very demanding job, a very good position. And, um, you know, but the children, of course, were getting older. And she, she knew in herself that she wanted a career. She wanted, and of course, it's also a great career, co corporate social responsibility. It's also giving something, right? Uh, and whatever you're doing, if you believe in what you're doing, then you want to stay true to that as well. That's, you know, that's your, that's your motive. That's your mission almost in life. And you've had several career changes of your own. So <laughs> how did you execute those successfully? Well, wasn't, wasn't without challenges. It wasn't without hurdles, but hurdles are there to be jumped over, aren't they? Um, it 
determination and uh, support, definitely. Uh, always going back to this, but it's so necessary. You know, you, you, you can't do it alone. Um, and sometimes you, 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 you simply need a you, you simply need a helping hand you sim you and we can talk about support in two different ways you know it's sort of practical support is really helpful really necessary and that's certainly what i was given when i felt that i needed to uh put my career back on track i started off as an academic i was an academic from for the first part of my career from the first part of my professional life then left that um, that track to set up a, fam to a, a family, to begin my family, um, but realized that I couldn't, you know, that this wasn't really enough for me. Um, and there was no intellectual challenge. Uh, there was no, there was no interconnection, you know, that you have in a professional uh, environment and the give and take uh, is so important so um, the support that I had through friends saying well you know you could talk to so and so you could uh, think about such and such and that was when I was given this opportunity to to work for a, a large organization and I had some ups and downs in them in in between I tried some project management. I learned a great deal when I worked as a project manager. I did that for about six, seven years. Um, and that was helpful because I, I think that was really a stepping stone to my coaching probably because I learned to work with many different kinds of people. And I learned what the challenges of management were. So that was, that was really helpful. But um, that's how that's how you that's how I managed. Uh, I got a lot of support through my friends, and then moving on, I got a lot of support through fellow coaches, fellow facilitators. Um, but you know, it's hard work, and certainly it's determination as well. Yeah, you mentioned hard work, determination, and really willpower to push yourself forward to get to this next level. Where do you think that comes from? How do you manifest that determination and, and use it to propel yourself forward? Uh, where does it come from? That's a very good question. Um, I think probably... <laughs> I've never really thought about that. Do you know, I think it comes from my parents um, who were elderly parents. I was um, a, the only child who came very late in life to them in their marriage. Um, and quite frankly, looking back, it's really very interesting. They gave me the, the feeling that I could do or be anything I wanted. So that laid the groundwork for a mindset that has carried me through my life, right? Um, also, as a woman, uh, there, there were never any barriers. N nobody ever said, or my parents never said, well, you can't do that because you're a girl or you can't do that, you know. So that was really, really uh, probably uh, quite key in my development, in, in my willpower. Yes. Yeah, well, it's, it's the voices around you. You had those supportive voices around you that led you to be able to achieve what you wanted. And really that's one of, it sounds like the key messages that you provide to your coaching clients. And in the book is having, having a network and having support and choosing the right people to be in that yes. network and have that support to, to empower you to do what it is that you want to do next. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and 
recognizing that strength in yourself is so important. I can remember one coaching client who worked in financial services and she was a very bright cookie and she was being um, encouraged by her boss to um, apply for a very senior role in the um, in the organization and she came to me for coaching because she said I can't do this he, he thinks I can but I, I don't think I can and that was the problem the I don't think I can right so we had to to work really hard on on boosting her self-confidence on and the way that you do that is remembering even small successes, small achievements that you've had, that you've, you have created throughout your life, going back to them and saying, well, yes, I guess that was an achievement, really. You know, one of the, um, one of the activities that one does as a coach is say, you say well, well, tell me about your three top achievements. And then sometimes people say, oh, I, don't, I haven't really achieved anything. You're saying, and I, well, think about it for a bit right and they come up with one and I say well yes absolutely well there it is well think of another and it's sort of incremental that they suddenly realize that they have achieved a great deal in their life and they've had successes and if I go back to to the story of my coaching client in the in in the financial services she did apply and of course she got the job and was very very happy um but it was a, it she really did need that extra realization of herself and so that's really important too yeah and uh, there's a topic that doesn't get discussed very often but it it should and i think if it did more women would have the permission to do so and that is leaving and re-entering the workforce after a career break so how do you do that successfully and, and what advice can you offer around that topic, which I, I feel like I can feel my listeners holding their breath right now as I even ask you this question. Um, it's, one of the, it's one of the most challenging things. Absolutely, Emily, you've, you've really hit the nail on the head. Um, I can think of a coaching client that I had who'd been out of the workforce for about 16 years, 16 years. And uh, she had brought up two gorgeous girls and she had devoted herself to them and to their education and, uh, you know, and being a good mother and being a good homemaker. Um, and she too had worked in financial services previously and she came to me uh, for coaching and, you know, what could, did I think this was possible? I said, well, if it's, do you think it's possible? Oh, well, I don't know. So anyway, we, we worked hard um, at her self-confidence and, re re you know, realized she'd been out of the workforce for 16 years. So she definitely needed to upskill she really needed to get back into what was going on in financial services now. So she did some courses and um, she became quite confident that she would be able to do this. Um, and then she said, well, but I don't know how to get into, get back into this environment back into this career so I said well you know you you use your network oh I don't have a network I don't have a network right so we then sat down and she worked out that in fact she did know some people um uh for example she met through a private connection private contact she met uh, somebody who was uh, the head of um, a bank uh, who had been to the same university as her. So I suggested that she reach out and ask him simply for a talk 
simply to present herself because that's also important you know going back into uh, a career you're presenting yourself in a way that you haven't been doing for a while right um so in fact she reached out and she was very surprised that his um ea returned her email within about i don't know a week or 10 days or something and said yes i've been asked to schedule a meeting with you and indeed she went to the meeting and he was very generous with advice and this is what my clients find practically always people love to give advice but you have to ask for it right you have to say here i am i'm trying to get back into my career that i loved but it's some time ago can you help me what advice do you have what advice what ideas do you have he wasn't able to offer her a job but he gave her some very very good advice and after upskilling uh she you know she reconnected uh she she went to lots of conferences where you meet a lot of people that's a really big tip go to the places where the people who are influential in your profession in your industry are and talk to people and be open be honest um you know again that does have something to do with self-confidence but the more you do it the better you get at it uh, I'm not sure whether I've really given you a complete answer. Uh, oh, Emmy. Susan, that was brilliant. I love what <laughs> you said there and the way that you walked through it and giving an example of a woman that left the industry for 16 years. I, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, you'll see maybe what my eyes did. They got huge. Okay. <laughs> and I took a big breath in 16 years feels like an eternity, but you know, she started out with, with a skill set and industry she worked in. And then Susan, you really walked us through like, okay, this is how you get back in it. And it's not dissimilar from how we entered the workplace the first time, right? Yes. You're sort of doing that True. same exercise, but, yes. um, you know, building, building your confidence back up and understanding that you're going to re-enter at a different level, a different capacity than if you were brand new. So yeah, I, I love and that's that. one of the things that I do also now I do pro bono work with students. Um, so that's exactly the same thing. Yeah, indeed. So why did you write the book smart career moves for smart women? Yeah. Tell us about about your book and of course, where we can pick up a copy. Um, but really, why? Why did you write this book? How did you make that decision? And and who is this book for? And how will it help change their life? well uh smart career moves for smart women how to succeed in career transitions uh came out of my own story but also all the women that I have coached and I can't give you a number but it must be hundreds perhaps it even goes into the thousands but it's it's many right and what I noticed was that it was very very often the career transition point that was sort of the sticking point that was the biggest challenge um, to move to move laterally to get a promotion to move out to move back uh, to move up you know it's the transitions that, that are always the, the biggest challenges that's what I noticed so and you know I I'm very fortunate to be able to say that I, the clients that I have had have been successful in their career transitions. Um, and so I thought, well, perhaps I can reach even more women with my book. So that's, that's really why I, why I wrote it. And um, it would be lovely uh, if I really could, if more women read it. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's uh, so it's available on Amazon. It's available via the uh, Routledge website. It's published by Routledge. It's also available via my website. Um, so it uh, it's it's it is out there. 
I love that. And, and if you guys loved the advice Susan gave us today, I think this just, you know, dips, dips your toe into the surface of, of what she, the advice that she gives um, in her book and to really guide you through whether you're asking for a promotion, you're applying for a new job, or you're deciding to change careers altogether. I think this is the handbook that you need to bring along for the ride. Yeah, it also has a toolkit. So it's it's really it's really actually my coaching program in a book. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you it's the reflective exercises, it's the activities. Uh, I suggest that you keep a coaching journal, and as you work through the book, you you have the exercises to do, but they're also in the toolkit at the end, all collected. So We've got uh, the final four questions on this podcast. And the first one is a little more in depth. The next three are pretty easy, but what is your best piece of advice for women to apply today to level up tomorrow? Believe in yourself. That's, that's what it is. It's the, you know, it's the, I can attitude. Just believe in yourself. Where are you traveling to next? Well, uh, actually, Emily, I've just come back from travels. Uh, I was in South Africa, in the Cape, uh, which is a very, very beautiful area. Uh, and I really thoroughly enjoyed that. And probably the next, uh, my next travel will be to Amsterdam um, to uh, see the Vermeer exhibition. And I'm looking forward to that. And what is your pump up song? What song gets you, gets you going and ready, ready to coach? Um, I'm a great women of jazz fan and I love Nina Simone. Uh, so any Nina Simone is, you know, is great, but probably my signature tune from by her is the feeling good uh which is you know just wonderful um because it's it's all about feeling good it's a new day it's a new dawn it's a new life and uh, even her own story about how about her career transition is very inspiring she wanted to be uh a classical pianist she trained as the classical pianist she had the talent she had everything but those were not the days for a black woman to be a classical pianist so she became a jazz pianist and I'm sure she looked back with a couple of regrets sometimes but basically she looked forward and found solutions and what is your favorite quote oh my favorite quote uh, my favorite quote is uh, Shirley Chisholm. If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And there again, for me, it's, uh, you know, it's representative of finding a solution. Finding a solution where you can speak up, where you can have your voice heard and where you can make your contribution. Susan, this has been such a wonderful conversation. You've given us so much advice and we will be sure to link all of the information on where to grab your book and follow along your journey in the podcast notes. So thank you for joining us today on Leadership is Female. Thank you, Emily. It's been a great pleasure.